Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, we carried out that old tradition of passing our bluebird feathers onto our next leader. Now Isana is ready to lead the tribe to their next island, or perhaps to their next safe haven. We'll have to see how it goes once she does make it to the rest of our tribe mates, but we do have another one of those calmer trees by this shore, and it's right next to the ports too. So maybe that's where she's going to set her sights next, as a way to prove herself as a valuable leader, of course. She knows it's going to be difficult since she has one of those no paws. They might see that as a potential weakness, but she also has one of the very few claws in the tribe, so they're going to need her up there just to protect them, in case any Baryinas decide to stumble out and munch on our weaker creatures. But we have a new family blooming with some new traditions too. Our flowers have developed a method to ensure that their family is going to be the most prosperous family in all of our tribes. Every time they find a berry bush, that allows them to have one child. So Serenade was the lucky one to stumble into this berry bush. Now she knows that her baby is going to be very well fed, and her legacy and her songs will both get to live on. That's also why Emerald is trying desperately to claw her way through the grass. She just wants to have one child before she passes, and she only has two days remaining on her lifespan. This berry bush that we had by the shore is available to use again, now that hibiscus is all grown up. So if we move these creatures correctly, I think we should still be able to have her have a child. If we scoot Kuro down into the tall grass... Oh, it looks like you guys have some little bunny friends up here too. That's another good reason to bring Isana and her brothers over in that direction, so the bunnies will stop terrorizing your families. But Kuro should be able to help guide Emerald up to their territory. And then we can take a quick look at their mutation menus, or Emeralds rather, to make sure that she's going to have a very healthy baby. I think what we might want to do is try placing the big nose into her first slot. I know it's very, very unlikely that it's going to get pulled over the turp snout, since it's what they're both currently wearing. But if there's any opportunity for us to get that higher smelling skill on our babies, we should probably go ahead and take it. And then of course, that stinky tail is very important for us to breed into our tribe too. Especially now that the apes have been leaving us alone kind of giving us some time to prepare. I mean, I just know they're waiting out here somewhere. In fact, they might even be blocking our second safe haven. There are quite a few of those jungle trees, so I wonder if Isana is going to stumble into our first ape. But with her mutation menu taken care of, let's hope that one breeding will do the trick. There we go, their fertility didn't get in the way that time. So she should still be able to stumble down to the berry bush, with the help of Kuro in the next turn, and then I'm sure he'll probably stay right by the new baby's side, because they'll need somebody to keep them safe. Cyriana, in the meantime, was very, very curious about these strange plants in the distance. She knows they would make for an excellent food source, they smell very inviting after all, but she's not quite sure if it's a good place for her to have a baby. Would it be just as valuable as one of their berry bushes? Oh my gosh, there's actually a nest right here with a little bunny inside too. Well, I mean, if there's a permanent nest, then she has to take that as a good sign. That has to be a good omen. So I guess she's found a place to settle down to have her next baby too. We'll just want to be careful because we don't want to risk her babies getting swallowed up by these plants if they end up growing back. In fact, what we could do is maybe just pick a few of the fruits. That way we don't have to worry about it respawning while the baby is still super little. And then of course, we can't forget about Hibiscus, who has been gazing longingly across this piranha-infested pond. He noticed this very beautiful creature with her spotty fur, which probably reminds him quite a bit of his family too. They are quite known for their spots, so let's have him use his last turn to gather the berries, 
so he'll have a little gift to give her. Serenade might as well use this time to help her leader just kind of clear out some of the grass around here so they have some better paths to work with. We do want to make sure that there are still some hiding places so the babies can tuck themselves away, but the escape routes are just as important. And now you guys can finally get back to food collecting as well. I guess we'll have Chipper focus on this plant for now. Just pick up those extra little fruits, and then this group is going to be on their merry way, going straight up the stream to hopefully find their tribe mates again. We'll have Isana carve the pathway, unveiling new berry bushes in the process, though clearly that one has already been munched on by the bunnies. She might even cross paths with Phantom and Amanita, as they work to gather from all of those carnivorous plants, Amanita's absolutely favorite snack. So I guess they're going to see if they can try their hand at these plants next. Though with that more a hostile one in the way, I am a bit concerned that Phantom is going to get scooped up. He thinks he's invincible. He thinks that he's too quick to get taken, but that sort of mindset really has no place in the jungle, and he's going to realize that pretty soon. But let's go ahead and skip the day, as it seems like Kuro may have attracted the attention of the bunnies. Oh, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave you alone because Kuro has a different job to do. We have to make sure that he can guide Emerald back down to her nest, or where she's going to build her nest at least. So we'll have him scoot into the tall grass. Maybe one more tile? Oh my gosh, we have a bunny down here too? Well, that's awfully lucky. I guess you could use your last turn to swipe at it once. Though again, because he is a little bit weak, he's going to need some extra energy to finish the job. Well, at least you tried. I know that Emerald is going to be very grateful. And maybe all of that commotion would attract Almond in your direction. He does have the claw, and I know that he's supposed to be uh, sticking by his siblings. But when bunnies are involved, you can't expect him to stand still. So let's bring him over here too, so he can help you hunt all of these delicious bunnies on the next turn. His siblings are going to be a little bit worried about him, but they know that he can take care of himself. Now let's see if Hibiscus can finally brave these piranha-infested waters. There are so many fish in here. There's actually not too many places for him to move because of it. Oh my gosh. Is there seriously a fish in like every single one of these tiles? They are just swarming this pool. No wonder Goldenheart was so interested in studying them. Well, hopefully he's going to be able to make it across okay. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like they're bothering him too much. And of course, that's because he's not wounded. So they have no reason to chase him down and munch on him. So while Golden Heart would consider that to be a very, very foolish endeavor, why on earth would a creature willingly jump into such a dangerous place? She would also be grateful that he managed to supply her with plenty of new knowledge new research for her to add to her study on the fish. He'll hand her those berries too, but I could see her just shaking her head as she leads him over to the berry bush that they have in their territory. With the skeleton of Rare still sitting next to it too, good thing her sister was able to set her remains to rest. I think Hibiscus is actually going to find this part of the land to be quite bountiful. He'll be very surprised to see how much food we actually have over here. And it would be a great place for him to start a family, since the berry bushes are such a great omen. And speaking of which, Serenade, on the last of your days, as you teach your little baby all of your songs, we'll have you scoop up those berry bushes. We'll change Lyric's gem over to your family's colors, of course. And then perhaps you could scoop up that nest too. You're certainly not going to be needing it any longer. Oh, she could even teach her how to dig up the roots. We do have a couple of them right by her side. So once she has an extra gem and a little bit more strength to spare, she'll be able to test out her shaman abilities. Cyriana can now settle herself down right inside this nest. It is a little bit close to some of those uh, jungle trees as well. 
In fact, it looks to be right on the edge of a cliff. Oh, this is an interesting place to make a nest. Maybe there's a reason why all of the creatures who lived here before ended up packing up and leaving. She's going to have to keep a very close eye on her next baby, just to make sure that they don't end up falling straight into danger. And yet another bunny for Amanita and Phantom to scoop up. So let's have them grab the meat, and then uh, hopefully clear out more of this grass, so we'll have more roots to work with. That way we'll be able to get to and from these carnivorous plants without so much difficulty. And likewise, Isana can get to work clearing out the pathways straight up to the safe haven, so we'll be able to connect the shore with the tree as well. But otherwise, I think we're all out of turns. So let's see what Emerald's baby is going to look like first. Her first and only baby, and hopefully one with the toxic body. Now it looks like they weren't able to inherit that. And thanks to that color, it looks like they have no fur whatsoever. Oh my goodness. She looks like a little naked mole rat. But it is quite a fitting color for our flower family. And I think we'll go ahead and give her the name Poppy. Luckily, she is not alone. She has her father by her side still, and he has a couple more days before he's going to pass away. So let's have him scoot on over in this direction and pick up all of those delicious berries before any of those bunnies decide to hop back their way. Unfortunately, it seems like they all have skittered off with the almonds so near. Oh, but this baby has the toxic body. Oh, the blue toxic body. You have some of the most exotic children, Cyriana. A royal blue to match that of our royal family. So I think we'll give her the name Bluebell. She almost looks just like the little flowers, so it seems pretty fitting. Now I guess, Cyriana, you're going to want to uh, spend some time cracking open those fruits. I thought this one back here was a Paragina. Oh, thank goodness we don't have any dangers to worry about, right? It looks like there's just some bunnies skittering around back there for the berries. So why don't we make sure that we gather them up first? Otherwise, we might risk uh, losing them all to those pesky little critters. I guess that's why we need Amanita and Phantom to return to this land too. I'm sure they're wondering how their old friend is doing anyways, so they might go ahead and do just that. Let's have Hibiscus and Goldenheart set up their mutation menus. After hearing what a good omen these berry bushes are to his family, and after the rainfall too, so they have plenty of berries to spare, I think she would be willing to start a family with this little guy. Now I'm wondering if maybe we should place one of the claws into Goldenheart's mutation menu. I don't really want to mess too much with the nimble fingers, but at the same time, I think it would be helpful for her family to have some way to scoop up all of those fish. Since she was so devoted to uh, studying them, I think that would be a good way to send her story. Then we know the black fur is going to help her babies blend in very well with the jungle, so we'll place that in there as well. But Hibiscus has a couple of little flaws that will want to breed out of his line very quickly. So we'll go ahead and place the normal eyesight into his first slot, and then perhaps the big ears into the second, since it does give them that heat resistance boost. Now maybe Mirage can at least startle the bunny away? No, it's actually stealing all of your berries! Well, at least you tried. And at least we still do have the meat to use on the next turn. We'll have Hibiscus breed with Goldenheart so she can settle down her nest and then we'll be ready to greet their baby soon. A lot of you have been asking lately where the home island immunity gene went, and Goldenheart is the one who's carrying it right now. Thankfully, she still has plenty of time left on her lifespan, so I would imagine that she's going to give us an heir with the special gene that we're looking for. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten about it. The home island gene is always one of my top priorities. So now, Cyriana, you can finally scoot on over here. As the bunnies continue to devour the berries somewhere, I still do hear them stealing something. Maybe it's these? Oh, that carnivorous plant doesn't care about the bunnies? You would think that would be an easy meal for this thing. I guess it's looking for the bigger meals. 
and that's why it's waiting for our tribe. But we'll crack these plants open for your babies. As a uh, Lyric sets to work, hopefully digging out a space for her mother, somewhere to set her remains to rest. She'll have to take over this berry bush too, so we don't lose out on that food, but I don't think she would mind the extra work. She would probably love nothing more than to help Cyriana build this home, singing all of her songs along the way. Bluebell is going to grow up with plenty of music surrounding her. Now, I suppose you guys might be able to jump in here and grab the bunnies for us. We don't want to get too close to the angry plant, of course, but we know Amanita would appreciate the help. And I think that should be just about the end of this turn. We'll go ahead and clear out the grass with Isana, and then have her little brother do the same over on this side of the island, ensuring that sweet little Poppy is going to be kept very, very safe as we go ahead and pass the day. Watching, of course, the nest of Golden Heart to see what her little baby is going to look like. Oh my gosh! I love her spots. And she has the claw too, which means that she could potentially do a little bit of fishing over in that stream. As long as it's the smaller fish, she's not exactly equipped to take out the piranhas just yet, but maybe if we find her a suitable partner, she'll be able to breed a little line of fishing creatures for the jungle. It's good to see that the water body is sticking in their traits as well. Oh, and she has her father's swimming tail. No wonder he was so good at swimming through that pond. Yeah, I feel like Hibiscus and Golden Heart were definitely made for each other. So we'll name this little baby Water Lily to remember the way that they met. Now, Golden Heart would not be the type of creature to sit idle. So we'll bring her over here to get back to her acorn collecting. As the bunnies try to sneak around the corner... Oh, you don't want to do that, little guy. If we bring Chipper up here, we might be able to have Isana chase them down. Excellent. The perfect way to introduce yourself to the tribe, catching plenty of food for all of their new babies. And even when he's not in the tall grass, Phantom is just the biggest bunny magnet. Amanita must be getting a little bit concerned that you're actually friends with these little bunnies. This one isn't scared of you at all. It certainly didn't have any food to eat, so are you actually communicating with the bunnies? It must all be part of his elaborate scheme. He is one of the bandits after all, so we know that he is very, very tricky. But now as they return to Golden Heart, They'll be quite surprised to find that she has already started a little family of her own. Maybe that'll even get them wondering if they'll have a family too someday. It'll plant that first idea in their mind. We'll have Cyriana pick most of these fruits, but not all of them so her baby doesn't end up getting devoured. Bluebell is probably much more curious about all of these songs coming from the distance. As the lyric gets to work digging out all of those graves, She'll sing some happier songs to lift her spirits. She's a little bit too young to go exploring on her own, though. I don't think Cyriana would be willing to let her out of her sight. And likewise, the babysitting role might soon be landing on Almond's shoulders. This is going to be Kuro's very last day, so he's going to have to entrust his baby to the nearest individual. Since Poppy is still very, very young, he doesn't have much of a choice. But Almond has been quite trustworthy so far, and with that wonderful claw, of course, he knows that Poppy is going to be in good hands. We won't have to worry about her getting picked off by any enemies. Though so far, this island has been so quiet. We haven't had a single Baragina to deal with, and the apes are still far, far away from our tribe's sight. So let's cross our fingers that it's going to remain that way as we skip the day once again and as the rain stops falling, meaning that our harvest is now over. But with more berry bushes in the territory, we know that Hibiscus still has plenty of opportunities to have children. We have this one way down here, which I think they're going to head toward next, after Goldenheart picks up just some of the last of her acorns. 
we know that she wouldn't want to leave those behind. So in the next episode, we'll continue Goldenheart's family to hopefully breathe that home island gene onto her babies. And I'm sure a little water lily is going to be very excited to investigate the pond where both of her parents met. I think it's clear that Isana and Chipper have gained the trust of their tribe mates too, so they should be quite willing to follow their next great scheme and perhaps go visit the second safe haven tree to see what might be waiting for us in some of the deepest, darkest portions of the jungle. I know those apes have to be somewhere, and that seems like a pretty good location for them to be hiding. We'll just have to cross our fingers that our creatures will be prepared with their stinky tails and their velvet paws to slink undetected through the jungle weeds. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!